Hey, it's Brandy, and I am back to share some more art with you. Today I am doing a collab with Maria over at Love Pray Paint. I will leave her links down below. Our challenge um, to each other was to do a Hocus, po a Hocus Pocus themed mixed media layout. So what I've pulled out to work with are some distress inks because I'm going to try to do like a distress ink watercolor background. Uh, I'm going to make a moon hopefully and then like a purple smoke background. We'll see how that goes. I pulled out my Kindred Stamps Witch Sisters stamp set. I also pulled out a couple of pattern papers from the Ikaboo set uh, which is by EK6. I've showed it before um, in other videos. I am also pulling out some watercolor. I like this XL Canson watercolor paper. I am also going to color up my images and stuff with my zigs to keep up that cohesive um, coloring so that it still has like a watercolor look because I'm doing the watercolor techniques with uh, my inks. So I'll have my zigs pulled out, and whenever I color with my zigs, I color on the Bristol Smooth. This is the XL Recycled Bristol cardstock from Hansen. Um, this is two-sided, and so there's a smooth, a really smooth side, and then the slightly smooth side. I usually color on the really smooth side. So that's what I'm going to start with. I'm going to take you guys along with me. I might pop in <laughs> um, to explain what I'm doing here or there. Otherwise, I'm just going to pop some music on and hope you guys enjoy. Thanks, and I'll catch up with you soon. So here I am just taking my distress inks and smushing them on my mixed media mat. And I'm getting some clean, clear water, and I'm just going to play. I'm just going to do lots of layers of color. I'm going to do a little bit of the light, which is the shaded lilac color, and a little bit of the dark, which is the dusty concord color. Um, I am not a mixed media artist. I don't usually do a lot of mixed media or watercolor. I am more of a scrapbooker, play with scrapbook paper kind of person. So this is very different for me. It took me quite a while. Um, I tried a bunch of different techniques. I definitely need a larger watercolor brush. Um, I heat set in between my layers so that I could get almost that like hard edges watercolor look um, and then I finally gave up on the water brush and just started pouncing my paper to get kind of the droplets because on my mixed media mat I'm not working on the glass surface I'm not working on the slick um, craft mat that comes with it the white one um, I also dried my page was starting to curl so I um, took my heat tool to the back of the paper to help with the curling of my watercolor paper. I was missing some of the light color at the top so I'm going to add some of the shaded lilac here at the top and yeah that's <laughs> this took me a little bit um one of the things I noticed is because I don't have a watercolor brush I was getting a lot of the fibers and the hairs from the brush in my painting so I definitely need to invest in some better watercolor brushes. I have one silver brush but it's a really small one. I think it's a number two um, which was definitely not good for this because this piece here that I cut of watercolor paper is 11 by 11 because I'm doing a 12 by 12 layout and so I wanted a border behind this piece but um, so this is 11 by 11. I'm going to sop up some of the puddles with my paper towel and then here is where I decided that it needed a little bit more variation so I added some speckles of um, black soot distressed ink and I splattered them on um, and then I also decided that the dark purple would be good in splatters so I did add some dust <laughs> So here I have just stamped out my images on Bristol Smooth cardstock from my stamp set and pulled out all of my zigs. I used quite a few zigs for this project. I will try to leave um, 
a list of all of the colors I used in the description box down below. But I used my mini Misties to stamp out everything and that was in the set um, for me. And then I went through and I colored each image. Um, when I'm coloring with my zigs, I always pick a dark and a light and then blend out. So I lay down my dark and then blend out with my light color. And sometimes if I want more dimension and more um, contrast between them, I'll go back in with the dark um, and add more shadow. I've noticed with my zigs, <laughs> it's easier to have two colors that are a little bit further away from each other in this in like the color family than it is to try to do a like when I color with my um, Copics, I was doing like two or three in different shades. Uh, for her hair, I just did a bunch of squiggle lines and then I went over with my light orange to kind of fade it out to kind of give it that curly hair look with a little bit of dimension. Um, all of them, I did their skin tone the same and their lips the same with the red lipstick. Here I'm just deciding what color combination I want on her outfit. I went with the, a mustard yellow um, color for her overcoat. And then she has a red dress and a purple ear. was done coloring all of my images with my zig. I did fussy cut all of them. I did not want to bore you with all of that. This video is long enough as it is watching me color. Um, I did leave most of the coloring in. The three smaller images I got interrupted by my kids and I didn't get footage of it. But I did fussy cut all of them and then I took a black Momento tuxedo um, marker around all of the edges. On the cauldron, when I was fussy cutting it and on the candle, I cut off the feet. They're not, I didn't bother cutting around them. And I did the same thing with the candle. Um, where the handles are on the cauldron, um, at first I just left them white. Um, and then once I figured where they were going on my layout, I colored it the same color as the background. So you'll see at one point the cauldron handles end up, like the inside of the handles will be colored yellow to match the background of the moon. Here I am using my Martha Stewart circle cutter to cut my large moon. I think I cut an eight inch moon just out of some yellow cardstock. I was originally going to do another watercolor technique, but I wanted some variation. Um, so here I'm just taking my Distress inks and I am going to ink up one side of my moon. It doesn't blend perfect on this paper because it's just random cardstock from my stash, so it's not really great for blending. Um, but I did work at it and I got some layers. I do recommend <laughs> grabbing a scrap piece of card 
because otherwise you will get inky fingerprints all over your inking. adding some clean clear water onto my mixed media mat and flicking it onto my moon to kind of give it some more texture. Uh, the distress ink will react with it and I just um, sop it up with a paper towel, clean up my mess. Um, you'll see the spell book on my desk all fussy cut. It's not on the final project because it got lost on my desk. I have no idea where it is. Here I'm just testing out what I want my layers to look like um, and I realized that the this paper has a white core um, and when I ripped it out of the thing it had like the perforated edge so it was just trimming up to get all that evened out and then so I'm gonna take my black distress ink and I'm just gonna go around the outside edge to hide that white core of that paper because I just don't like the look of it and um, I'm just gonna work on my layers here I'm gonna start with this EK6 or this um, Ikaboo piece of paper from um, DCBW I'm going to add a piece of purple cardstock it's a basil cardstock from my stash and then I'm going to layer my um, watercolor piece on top of that and my inked up moon I know I want the moon at the bottom and I'm eventually going to cut off the bottom here I'm just prepping my photo mat um, I want to be able to put a 4x6 photo on this layout, so I'm just cutting my mat. This is the largest of the mats, so this is 4.5 um, by 6.5 so that I can put a 4 and a quarter white piece on top. Um, so that when I put my 4x6 four by, my four by photo, I don't have to cut it down. Um, just testing out my layout here and seeing what I like. So here I'm just playing with where I want all my images to go um, and what I want the final layout to look like, how I want to get everything set. What I decided was I really like the sentiment to go along the edge of the moon. To curve that, I just put it on my block straight and then kind of slightly bent the sentiment and then tested like how the curve fit along the side of the moon until I got it to the way I like it. I have multiple um, blocks, so I do have each part of the sentiment on... Um, two different blocks, but if you only had one block, you could just switch the block out. Um, here I am putting um, ATG tape on my purple layer and then putting it on top of my spider web layer. The spider web layer is 12 by 12, the purple layer is 11 and a half by 11 and a half, and then my watercolor piece is 11 by 11. I used score tape on that because it was pretty warped from all the watercoloring I did on it, and I wanted it to lay as flat as possible. Um, just getting it lined up so that I've got good layers on top of it and then smoothing it out. I do take my bone folder and burnish it so that it's really well adhered because it was pretty warped. Um, and then I'm going to layer my moon on top and look at how I want my photo mat to sit and make sure it's kind of mostly centered. I am, before I hear the moon, going to stamp the sentiment. That way if I screw it up, I can cover it up. I, in this whole thing, um, both with my... Um, images and everything. I've been using Versamark Onyx Black Ink. It's my favorite ink um, if I'm not Copic coloring because it's nice and bold and black and it stamps really crisp. So I'm going to hold um, my moon down and then stamp right along the edge um, the first half of the sentiment and then I'm going to ink up the second half and then stamp it right next to it and getting it lined up with that edge of that moon which my head gets in there a little bit so I apologize. And then I'm just going to adhere my moon down and keep on playing with the layout.
here I decided that I wanted to add another photo, um, like a layer to my photo mat. I really wanted to bring more of that purple in, so I did add a purple um, cardstock layer um, behind the black, so it's um, the dark purple, a black layer, and then the white layer. Here I'm just using um, my foam squares to pop up all of my images, so including the little candle and the kitty at the top, as well as the three sisters and the cauldron. They're all popped up on um, foam dots. I do also add a happy Halloween sentiment in a minute, and that one I only popped up on half because it overlaps the photo mat, and um, it didn't need that much dimension because I was going for three layers of cardstock. So um, I just put it on half of the sentiment. enjoyed crafting along with me I had a lot of fun uh, making this layout so I'm just gonna go over quickly what I did so I did use one of the EK success scrapbook papers in the background I used the spider web one I did add a purple piece of cardstock and then I did do my watercolor background um, on top of that I stamped out from the stamp set it's just a bunch of hocus pocus uh, from one of my random stamps in my collection I just pulled out a Halloween sentiment and then I colored all of the characters with my zigs um, I did go back through at the end and go and add some white highlights on all of my like on my moon and on my characters and everything uh, my photo mat is a fur 4x6 photo and then I just have it double matted on some black and purple cardstock I hope you guys enjoyed crafting along with me today, and I will see you on the next video.